Welcome to What is Truth? Brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth? is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Stahl. Welcome to the program. You do know it's only going to be just a couple of weeks away from Christmas. Yes, Christmas is coming. It's coming quickly. And uh, people are excited. They go into the stores. They're playing the Christmas music. The sights and the sounds and the music and the smells, it's spectacular as you go in. Uh, and the music is beautiful. And people are out there shopping and spending money and getting presents for people. Well, what could be wrong about Christmas? I mean, it's such a beautiful thing. Uh, we have two very important booklets that we would like to share with you today. Our program is, the topic is, what is the plain truth about Christmas? And the first, our, uh, uh, the first booklet is The Plain Truth About Christmas. Let's look at it. It says The Plain Truth About Christmas. And at the bottom of the booklet, it says, Where did we get Christmas? Where did it come from? Did it come from the Bible? Most people think it, it did. Or did it come from paganism? Here are the astonishing facts which may shock you. Do you know the origin of the Christmas tree? Well, what does the Christmas tree have to do with the birth of Christ? Or Santa Claus. What does Santa Claus have to do with the birth of Christ? Or the mistletoe? Or the holly wreath? Or the custom of exchanging gifts? Now, in the inside cover, the author of this booklet wrote, When I was growing up, I believed in Santa Claus and the celebration of Christmas. Didn't you? I got married and had children. I did not want to teach my children a lie. If they found out that I was lying about Santa Claus, they might wonder if I was telling the truth about Jesus Christ. So if you tell one lie, people would think the other case is, is a lie also. In mid-1955, I came across this booklet, The Plain Truth About Christmas. It opened my eyes to the truth about Christmas. I am reprinting it, hoping it will be as helpful to you as it was to me, Tom Justice Pastor. So that's the first booklet. The second booklet is, why do you observe Sunday? Most of Christianity observes Sunday as the day of uh, going to church and so forth, religious uh, people. Now, let's, the Bible teaches the observance of the Sabbath. Which day did, Jesus, did Christ and the apostles observe which day did Paul teach Gentile converts to observe? How did the day become changed from the seventh to the first day of the week? Sunday is the first day of the week. Some people think Sunday is the seventh day. All you need to do is look at a calendar and you'll see it's the first day of the week. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 commands us to prove all things. I ask you to please read this booklet with an open mind if you are already right. Honest investigation will but confirm it. If you are wrong, you should want to know it. So if you're celebrating the wrong day, 
then you should want to know it. I had a gentleman call me up. He says, I'm 80 years old. I've always kept Sunday all my life. And now I just realize that Sunday is not the Sabbath day, that the Sabbath day is Saturday. That's right. The Sabbath day is Saturday, and it starts at sunset Friday, and it ends at sunset on Saturday. Now, he was uh, 80 years of age, and uh, it finally came to him that he understood the truth. These booklets are free. We never ask the public for money. They're free. All you need to do is call up. No one will ever ask you for money. We're happy to send them out. You could also have a DVD of this program for free. Just call the number on the screen and someone will answer and take your order and ship it right out to you. Let's go to the Bible. Let's go to the Bible, and nowhere in the Bible does it talk about Christmas. And nowhere in the Bible did the, uh, did the, the did, uh, Paul or any of the disciples or any of the uh, saints ever keep Christmas no one has ever celebrated Christ's birthday. Well, we know the day he died. It was the Passover day. And we know the time during that day that he died. He hung on that stake from 1 o'clock, from 12 o'clock to 3. And he died at 3. He gave up the spirit. We know the exact hour that he died and the exact day. But do we know the day that Jesus Christ was born? That day is hidden from us. Let's look and see what the Bible says. Let's go to Luke chapter 2, and we're looking in verse 1. Luke chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that the, all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went out to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. So Joseph was born in Bethlehem because he was of the house and the lineage of David. So he could follow his, uh, he could follow his lineage down to King David. And let's read on a little further. And it says here in verse 5, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that when they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So they were at an inn and they were at the manger, which was where the animals were kept. And, uh, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. So they were, they were abiding in the field. They were sleeping out there in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. This is important. This is very important. It's an important proof that Jesus Christ could have never 
ever been born on December 25th. We're stopping here. He could have never been born on December 25th or anywhere in December. Why? Well, we go to the booklet, which tells us why. And it says here, any encyclopedia, it's on page four, or any other authority will tell you that Christ was not born on December 25th. The Catholic Encyclopedia. Now, this is the Catholic Encyclopedia. Frankly states this fact. They state the fact. The exact date of Jesus' birth is entirely unknown, as all authorities acknowledge. So it's all, it's unknown. Now, here it also says in the booklet, we'll go back to the booklet, it says, if God had wished us to observe and celebrate Christ's birthday, he would not have so completely hidden the exact date. We don't know the exact date. We don't even know the exact month he was born. Now, there is not one word in the New Testament or anywhere in the Bible telling us to observe Christmas. This is a man's holiday. It's not God's. The Christians of the first century under the inspired teachings of Peter and Paul and other apostles never observed it. They never kept his birthday. There is no biblical authority for its observance, strange as it may seem. Then where did we get Christmas? Where did it come from? Since it has come to us through the Roman Catholic Church. Yes, it came to us through the Roman Catholic Church and has no authority but that of the Roman Catholic Church. So if you're keeping Christmas, you're following the authority of the Roman Catholic Church, if that's what you want to do. Let us examine the Catholic Encyclopedia published by that church. Under the caption, Christmas, you will find Christmas was not among the earliest festivals of the church. In other words, the church didn't keep Christmas early on. The first evidence of the feast is from Egypt. The Egyptians were keeping uh, a holiday like Christmas and it was tied into pagan customs centering around the January calends gravitated to Christmas. And further, we find this truth acknowledged in scripture. Sinners alone, not saints, celebrate their birthday. So, <laughs> so sinners celebrate their birthday? Wow. The Catholic Encyclopedia has this. Christmas, the Mass of Christ. Christmas was not among the earliest festivals of the church. It was not instituted by Christ or the apostles or by biblical authority, Bible authority. It was picked up afterward from paganism. And the American Encyclopedia says Christmas, it was according to many authorities, not celebrated in the first centuries of the Christian church as Christian usage in general was to celebrate the death of remarkable persons rather than their birth. Now we're gonna stop here. We're gonna come back very shortly. Please don't go away. We've got so much more to show you. We'll be right back.
Goldstein, The Safe Money Guy, at 575-556-2472, to learn about innovative strategies now available to help you grow, protect, and preserve your money and financial future, regardless of market conditions. Horizon Granite is here. It's here. Horizon Granite is here. We'll come to you to customize your kitchen and bathroom with beautiful countertops and cabinets. Find out more at horizongranite.com. Call us at 575 650 3180. Horizon Granite is here. It's here. Make yourself a beautiful home. Welcome back to the program. Our topic today is what is the plain truth about Christmas? And we're explaining, if you tuned in late, we're explaining Christmas. Where did Christmas come from? Christmas is, is absolutely spectacular. The, you go in the stores, the music is fantastic, fantastic music, the smells, the, the, uh, the sights, all of the decorations, it, it's absolutely beautiful. And you may have, Harper uh, may have thoughts about Christmases that you spent with the family and with your aunts and uncles and grandma and grandpa. <clears throat> and we're not here to take any of that away from you. That was absolutely beautiful, family gathering together to eat a meal, and they enjoyed it, and they passed presents back and forth to each other, and it was a, it's an enjoyable time of the year for most people. But what we're looking at today is, we're looking at the understanding about where Christmas came from. Yeah, it wasn't in the Bible, the disciples did not celebrate Jesus' birthday, and it was added much, much afterward. Now, I'm going back to this booklet on uh, what the, the plain truth about Christmas. It says here, how, right here, how this Pagan custom, it was, a, it was a custom by the pagans. They were celebrating Brumalia, Saturnalia, they called it. How it got into the church. Now notice, these recognized historic authorities show that Christmas was not observed by Christians for the first two or three hundred years a period longer than the entire history of the United States as a nation. It got into the Western or the Roman Church by the 4th century A.D. So that was over 300 years. It was not until the 5th century that the Roman Church ordered it to be celebrated as an official Christian festival. So, then how did this heathen custom creep into a so-called Christianity? <clears throat> the Schaff Herzog Encyclopedia explains it clearly in its article on Christmas. How much the date of the festival depended upon the pagan Brumalia, which was December 25th, <clears throat> Following the Saturnalia, which was <clears throat> December 17th to the 24th, that was a whole week, and celebrating the shortest day of the year and the new sun cannot be accurately determined. The pagan Saturnalia and Brumalia were too deeply entrenched 
in popular custom to be set aside by Christian influence. Well, here's what happened. Let me explain that. December 21st is the shortest day of the year. And that these pagans were all excited that the sun was dying. The sun was dying uh, and they would wait until December 25th when the day started getting a little bit longer. Now you notice out there even today the days are getting shorter and shorter and shorter as we get up to December 21st which is the shortest day of the year. So by December 25th, they thought that the sun god, who had either died or lost its power, either came back and, or had its power restored and came back and they uh, started giving gifts to one another, holding celebrations, and a lot was tied around the end of the year. Now, the shepherds were out in the field watching flock over their, their uh, watching over their flocks by night. Now, they could have never, they could have never done that in December because they would have brought the flocks in by uh, October, say October 20th, the flocks would be taken in and they would not be sleeping out in the field because that would start the first of the rainy season. So the rains would come from uh, about October 20th on through the winter time as winter progressed. Now the Roman government would never have taken people, told people that they had to come out in the dead of winter to the place where they were born, uh, it wouldn't make any sense. What would make sense would be the fall holy days that the people were keeping. People were keeping what is called the fall holy days. That was the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles, which usually took place at the end of September or the very beginning of October. That would be the time that people were on the move. So starting in the 1st of October probably would be the area of when they were commanded to go back to the place where they were born to be taxed. So there is Bible proof about that. Let's turn in our Bibles to Jeremiah chapter, well, let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 10. What is the origin of the Christmas tree? That's what we're asking. And here it is right here in chapter 10. Hear you the word which the Lord speaks unto you, O house of Israel. This is back about 600 years before Jesus Christ ever came on the scene. Thus says the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of the heathen, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cuts a tree out of the, out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born. They got to be carried. 
because they cannot go. They can't walk. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. There's no good that comes out of a Christmas tree. And uh, what, first of all, we're stopping there. First of all, what does a Christmas tree have to do with Jesus Christ? It is a, it is a pagan custom along with mistletoe and along with a wreath, these wreaths that people hang on the door. They did that five, six hundred years before Christ came along. Well, why don't you order these two very important booklets today? Why don't you get right on the phone as soon as the program ends? Uh, we'll, be, we'll have someone waiting to take your order. The Plain Truth About Christmas. And the second booklet is Why Do You Observe Sunday? And we do have an interactive Bible study uh, every week, a Saturday at 1 o'clock at the meeting room at 1701 East Missouri. Uh, bring your Bible, a notebook, a pen, and bring your questions. We'd be so happy to answer any questions that you have about the Bible or Christian living, or perhaps you want to talk to a pastor and uh, you, you want some advice or counsel, we'll be happy to counsel you. Until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.